Hello, and welcome to this Dell Storage Introduction to iSCSI Data Center Bridging with Dell SC Series Arrays using the System Center OS version 7 software. This video demonstrates how to configure iSCSI fault domains on the SC9000 platform, how to configure data center bridging on the QLogic 57810 Converge Network Adapter, as well as review the configured data center bridging policy map on a Force 10 S4810 switch. Let's get started by logging into the SC9000 using the Dell Storage Manager client. Once logged in, click Storage, select Fault Domains, and click Create iSCSI Fault Domain. Enter a name for the new fault domain. Select one port from each of the two controllers. Enter the IP address information and subnet mask information and gateway information if it's required. and then click OK. Click Create iSCSI Fault Domain again to enter the second fault domain as is recommended by best practices. Again, enter the name information, select ports on each of the two controllers, enter the IP address information, enter the subnet mask information, and the gateway information if it's required, and then click OK. Next, click Convert to Virtual Port Mode, which is required to enable data center bridging. Then enter the IP information for each of the fault domains. And then click OK. Click the first of the fault domains to verify and change the MTU setting and VLAN ID. Click Edit Settings, check the box VLAN Tagged, enter the VLAN ID, and then change the MTU to the desired MTU size, and click OK. Note the updated MTU size and VLAN ID. Now we'll do the same for the second fault domain. Again, click Edit Settings, check the VLAN Tagged box, enter the desired VLAN ID, and change the MTU to the desired size and click OK. Because we made fault domain changes, the front end ports on the array need to be rebalanced. Click the Summary tab and then click Rebalance Ports. Click the Hardware tab, the top controller, I.O. ports, iSCSI, and the top iSCSI adapter, and then select data center bridging information to verify that the data center bridging information has been passed down from the upstream switch. Additionally, select link layer discovery protocol to verify that information was also sent from the upstream switch. Although we won't be configuring the Force 10S48 switch, we will be verifying the configuration through the use of these commands. Notice the bandwidth percentages of each of the priority groups. And then show the configuration for the switch port interface. Notice the percentages for the DCB map. Next, show the DCB status information. Then show the DCBX configuration. Then show the ETS configuration applied to the port on the switch. Notice the 70% LAN and the 30% iSCSI. Configuration of the QLogic 57810 CNA is performed through the QLogic Control Suite software. 
the iSCSI offload engine needs to be enabled on both ports of the adapter. This is accomplished through selecting the adapter moving to the Configurations tab and clicking Configure. Then check the box for iSCSI. Click Next. As a note, this will interrupt iSCSI traffic. Next, we'll set a static IP address on this adapter. Now we'll set the MTU, and then we'll add a VLAN ID. Click Apply, and again, it will interrupt communications on this adapter. By clicking on the Diagnostics tab, we can verify the configuration works by entering an address and sending a ping. Notice the completed with no errors. From the Information tab for the adapter, notice DCB is enabled and the bandwidth percentages by group. And now we configure the second adapter the same way we configured the first. Now we'll configure the LAN side of the QLogic 57810 adapter. This is done through the operating system. Select the adapter, right click and go to Properties. In the Properties, select the TCPIP version 4 configuration and hit Properties. Use Select the following address and enter the static IP address in the subnet mask, and then click OK and Close. Renaming the adapter with the IP address applied to it in the name makes it easier to find for future identification. Then configure and rename the second adapter just as the first. And finally, for both adapters, right-click, go to Properties, click on the Configure button and the Advanced tab, and edit the packet size and the VLAN ID, and click OK and Close. And now we'll put this configuration to use and show that the traffic is going where it's supposed to go. IPERF is used to generate network traffic, and VDBench will be used to generate iSCSI traffic. The first test is the iSCSI workload traffic. Notice with the VDBench load, the iSCSI traffic is utilizing all of the bandwidth available. The LAN workload test uses just the network and not iSCSI. Notice as we begin the tests, the utilization of both of our adapters in question approach 100%, utilizing all of the bandwidth available. On the final test, we'll use both iSCSI and LAN traffic for our testing. With the LAN traffic already going, we add the iSCSI traffic once again. As both traffics converge, notice the drop in the LAN traffic from 100% to 70% utilization. Additionally, notice the SAN traffic has dropped to near 30%. Thanks for watching. The paper that accompanies this video will provide additional information as well as other resources that you can refer to.